Let me just kind of set the framework up. When I was thinking about this, I said, you know, what's useful to kind of teach that I, that's something that you can use right away. And I thought about storytelling, right? And, you know, some people say story selling, storytelling. It is the ability to tell a good story. And I was listening to, uh, here's a tip. I like to listen to preachers. Like if I, when I go on YouTube, I look for preachers. I don't know why. I just like to listen to them preach. Uh, because they have, you know, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them have like the gift of not only telling stories, but tying it to, you know, something that's relevant. And I was listening to a guy this morning, uh, forgot his name already, but he was really good. And I said, you know what, that's what I'll talk about today. I want to do, I want to talk about story and story selling, and I'll show you what I do. And I'm telling you, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. If you learn this skill, I'm telling you, if you learn this skill, what I'm going to teach you is the framework. But if you learn it, you will increase your sales ability like uh, like that. Not just, uh, I'm talking like, ah, uh, because it is the ability. Remember, we're human beings. We're used to sitting around. If you go back, to, back in the day, I'm talking back in the day, we're talking caveman. We sat around the fire. We told stories. People remember stories. And what we're doing when we're selling we're presenting a product, we're presenting a service, what are we doing? We're telling a story. A story has narrative, but we want to make sure that the story sticks, right? And so what I want to do is give you today a framework for you to begin to incorporate story selling into your presentation. So I combine those two words. To me, they mean know how to tell a good story that sells something that you're offering. Now, let me slow down here because when I talk about selling, I'm expanding the definition. Typically, we talk about selling a product, right? We talk, or we talk about selling a service. But sometimes you have to sell, if you're a manager, you want to convince your team that they can achieve a certain goal. Or maybe if you're coaching people, you got to sell them on the go. Or sometimes you have to sell an idea, right? I don't know. Sometimes you have to sell a vision. Or last but not least, sometimes, sometimes, you have to sell that energy, that enthusiasm. Get people fired up like, yeah. You know what I mean? You ever see those movies? Like I was watching the other night, uh, what is, uh, what's the movie with Denzel Washington, uh, The Titans? If you watch the movie The Titans with Denzel Washington, give me a one. Or just put Denzel. So I think it's The Titans, something The Titans. And there's a, there's a speech that he gives, you know, where they had the um, uh, a, a big Civil War battle. I forgot. I think it was the Battle of Gettysburg. And again, so sometimes you have to sell that energy, that passion. So this is all the stuff we sell. We sell products, we sell service, we also sell goals, ideas, you know, visions and energy, right? So did somebody you get the movie? Yeah, remember the Titans. Thank you, Steve. Bingo, That's, that was the movie. Love that movie, right? Uh, I love Denzel Washington, man. I, I just love Denzel Washington. So, uh, you know, King Kong ain't got nothing. No. Yeah, anyway, you know the movie. Uh, so anyway, stay focused, Victor, stay focused. Uh, yeah, by the way, I had a troubled kid. I had like ADHD since I was a kid. So I've noticed that a lot of salespeople have ADHD, by the way. So anyway, back to the topic at hand. So this is all that we're selling sometimes. I mean, we're really selling a lot. We're selling products, service, ideas, vision. That's what we do. And sometimes you can give people facts, right? And I'm giving you the basics right now. Let me just lay some foundation. We know that I can, if this is the brain, right? We know there's the logical part. I've talked about this. There's the emotional part. And then there's the survival part of the brain. But this part right here is what we know as system one. This is system two. System one is the emotional piece. That's the part that just really you know, gets you going. Then we rationalize it logically, system two. Most of our decisions are system one decisions, right? And so, again, we can be logical, but storytelling really hits this part of the brain. That part of the brain that just fires people up, gives them the courage to make that final decision. Remember, sometimes people already logically have thought about what they want to do. They just need an emotional nudge to get them over the line. So what I want to do is share with you, when I'm talking, when I'm presenting, when I'm pitching, or when I'm doing a large keynote on a big stage, I'm going to give you my secret for developing content. And it's a really simple formula. And then I'm going to give you examples and we're going to dig into it. So here is the magic formula for story selling. First of all, and you can change the order, but let's just start out. You're going to tell a story, right? We're going to tell a story. 
and we're going to work through some stories. I got three stories we're going to work through together to give you an example. Then that story is going to have a point. Now that point has to be like a point, like, ah, you got to get that. And then the last part is the application piece. In other words, telling a story, making a point is one thing, but then how does it apply to you? So if I'm talking to a buyer and I just told them a story with a key point, now I have to say, now here's how this applies to you. Because telling a story with a point is great if you're just storytelling and we're just hanging around and you're drinking. But if I want to sell, I gotta say, here's how it applies to you. By the way, the way I remember this is I use this acronym, SPA. So you wanna give people the SPA treatment. I thought that was clever. I thought that was cute, but that was just me. But anyway, so when we're, when we're telling a story, we wanna give people the SPA treatment. So let's go through some examples, right? And so I've got three stories for you. And, and by the way, never, never tell a story by starting out, hey, I'm gonna tell you a story. Now I'm gonna do it here because we're just kind of doing this workshop thing here live. But when you're talking and speaking, you don't say, let me tell you a story. You know, you just, you have to come up with a soft way to go into it. So, a man walks into the doctor's office. When was the last time you went to the doctor's office? I want you to take yourself back to that. You went to the doctor's office. Man goes into the doctor's office and doctor says, what's wrong? Man says, I'm hurting everywhere. The guy says, I'm hurting everywhere, right? And the doctor says, what do you mean you're hurting everywhere? He says, he says everything hurts equally as bad. He says, everything. And the doctor's kind of confused because the doctor's never seen it. You know, these symptoms before, you mean everything's hurting the same with the same magnitude and intensity. He says, yes. He says, really? He said, well, do me a favor. So he said, take your finger, touch your head. So the guy touches his head and he goes, ah, pain. He says, the doctor's looking at this like, wow, that's pretty interesting. He says, well, touch your neck. Guy touches his neck. God, ow! He screams again, right? The guy said, well, well, touch your chest. Touch his chest. Ow! That hurts too. Touch your stomach. Ow! Goes all the way down to the thigh. Ow! All the way down to the knee. Ow! And the doctor says, I think I found your problem. And the guy says, what? He says, you have a broken finger. Right? Broken finger. Simple story. Kind of funny. Again, let's not judge my stories on humor right now. It's just a story. Now, let's deconstruct that story. Because if I'm telling that story from the stage, first of all, I wouldn't drop it cold like I just did right now. I would weave it into a longer narrative, right? I would slide it in. But when I would tell a story like that, if I were to tell a story, that story on stage, I would say, look, man walks into the doctor's office, tells a whole story, finds out his finger's broken, right? And then you say, now we gotta go, so we just told the story, right? And the story is, we'll call this the man in pain. The man in pain. The man in pain story. I tell the man in pain story, and the point is he had a broken finger. That was the real problem. It wasn't all of this. And then I can now make a point. Here's where I can introduce a point or a learning moment. Now, how would you use a story? How would you use a story to make a point? Here's what I came up with, and then you can put yours in there if you like, what you would do. The way I would use this story, because when I hear stories, and they have these type of twists, like, ah, it was actually his finger that was broken. That was the real pain point. I would use it to make the point that sometimes we focus on the wrong things when we're trying to solve something, when really it's just one thing. And if we focused on that one thing, we could solve our other problems. For example, there's a phrase in business called high leverage activities. A high leverage activity is if you did this activity, if you did this one activity, you would solve five to 10 of your problems. That's called a high leverage activity. So I would use this in a high leverage activity scenario. So I would say something like this. I would say, after I told the story, I, I would say I would make the point, too often we think that we have many problems, but in reality, we just have one problem, right? And that's how I kind of summarize that. We think we have many problems, but we have one problem. Now, watch how I make this apply to you. Now, I'm gonna make it apply to you. Let's say you're in sales, and I'm training you, right? I'll say, so let me just do it again. Let me go through slowly. I tell the story. It's your fingers broken, right? Then I make the point. Too often, we think that we have lots of problems, 
But in reality, sometimes we just have one big problem that we haven't identified. And if we can solve that one problem, like fixing the finger, we can solve the rest of the issues. Now, how does this apply to you? Many people tell me, said, Victor, my sales are hurting. Notice I use the word hurting because I'm using the story with pain, right? Many people tell me that their sales are hurting. And when I dig deeper, I realize that the only reason, because I ask them, why are your sales hurting? Some will say, Victor, it's the product we're selling. Victor, it's the service we offer. Now, Victor, it's just that our process is too complicated. Victor, our customer service isn't that big. Victor, it's this. Now notice, I just identified five things, right? But notice what I'm doing is I'm tying it also to what I did with the body, right? Head. Sometimes we think it's customer service. Sometimes we think it's the product. Sometimes we think it's da-da-da. Sometimes we think it's da-da. Sometimes we think it's da. But the real problem is that may, in all these cases, when I talk to sales teams and I look behind what the real problems are, much like the doctor found the real problem, I usually find the problem. And the problem that most sales teams have is prospecting. They don't have a sales problem. They have a prospecting problem. They don't know how to find the right clients. Do you like that? Because that was pretty good. Come on, you got to admit, that was pretty good if you think about it, especially if you're coming off the cuff like that. That was pretty good. And so what happens? So, but in all seriousness, notice what I did. This is a really interesting way to layer a story because what I did is I started out with the story of the man in pain. And if you remember, I'm going to get visual here. I'm going to get visual here. Pain here, pain here, pain here pain here, pain here. And I could come up with one, two, three, four, five. And I would do this on purpose, by the way, in my head. In my head, I would say, you know, touch your head, touch your neck, touch your chest, touch your waist, whatever, and touch your knee. Five things, right? Now, I would make the point that it's really just one thing. And we'll call that a high leverage activity, right? Now, how does it apply to you? This is where I pivot the story. And then I say something like this. When I work with sales teams and I ask them, why are your sales hurting? Back to this, they usually say, Victor, it's my sales process. And then what I would do from the stage, I would do this. Sometimes they say, it's my sales process. Sometimes they say, it's my product. Sometimes they say, it's customer service. Sometimes, the, so forth. But in the end, and I'll hold my finger up like this, the real problem is, is prospecting. They're not talking to the right clients. Because if you're talking to the right clients, then you have the right product. If you're talking to the right clients, you'll also have the right sales process. If you're talking to the right clients, and these are your clients, customer service knows how to deal with them, so you'll alleviate all the other problems. So then, I've just set this up as a prospecting problem using a story. But notice what I did is I set up a story that ran in one direction, and then I tied it into what I really wanted to talk about, which was prospecting, okay? So let me do a second one, because we're going to do three of these, man. We're going to do three of these, and you're going to figure out how I build stories on stage. This is exactly how I build stories. I'll sit there and just go, okay, how do I tie that into that, that into that? Here's a story. Here's the point. Now, how do I figure out the application? Story number two. Story number two, and again, you don't say, hey, let me tell you a story. Don't do that. But he says, and you could just start out the story I said, Mom takes out her kid to the playground. Kids having fun, having a good time, just running around. And then you can actually re relate this to, I said, how many remember those days where you, were, you played in, in the playground? <sighs> people raised their hand, right? I said, how many of you remember how, like having a sandbox or something? Some people raised their hand. How many remember loving the feeling of playing in the dirt? Raise your hand. And people are gonna say, everybody's plays it in the dirt. I said, I said, well, this little young man was running around, played, having fun. And after an hour or so, he realized that he lost his contact lens, right? Because he had contact lenses. So he lost his contact lens. So he starts looking for his contact lens. And after about two minutes, after about two minutes, notice I'm emphasizing two minutes, right? Just keep that in mind. After about two minutes, he said he can't find it. He gets frustrated. He runs to his mother and he says, Mom, and he's, he's panicking. He's, he's feeling really bad. But he says, Mom, I lost my contact. I was playing over there. I lost my contact. Mother runs over there. Mother runs over there. And within seconds, she finds the contact, right? Now, by the way, you can, you can stretch these stories. So let's, let's kind of play with the story a little bit. Kid is actually digging. Two minutes might not be long enough. Let's say he was, he was trying to find the contact lens for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, okay? 
Kid's digging, trying to find his contact lens for 30 minutes, can't find it because he doesn't want to go back to his bus. He spent 30 minutes looking for this contact. And then he goes back and what happens? Tells his mother, mother decides to come back. Mother looks and she finds the contact within one minute. So let's set the story up. Let's set the story up. Loss of contact, right? You guys with me? Loss of contact, right? Lost the contact, mother found it, right? And the little boy asked, let me finish the story. The little boy asked the mother, mom, how were you, how were you able to find it so quick? And the obvious answer is, son, we had two different motivations. You simply wanted to find it. I saw $250 worth of contact lenses, so my motivation was higher to look for it, you know, to really dig for it and find it. So what I would say is that I would tell the story, and what's my point? That you can have two people looking for the same thing, but the person that's most motivated will actually look harder, right? So the person, two people looking for the same thing in the same pile, one didn't see it, searched for 30 minutes. The other who was super motivated, the mom, because they knew if they didn't find it, they'd have to pay 250 bucks. She was motivated. She found it because she was motivated to find it because she knows how much that contact lens costs. And so the point here is that, again, lost the contact, kid couldn't find it, right? Calls the mother, mother finds it in less than two minutes. Kids were searching for 30 minutes, couldn't find it. Now, how does it apply to you? Now, watch how I oof, shift it again. So now I got to turn this, because if you tell the story, that's a great story. And people go, that's a, that's a nice story, that's kind of funny, but how does it apply to me? Now I pivot, remember, story, I make a point. And now again, I'm just imagining my audience, because you got to know your audience. I'm talking to sales managers or salespeople, right? Now, how does it apply? Let's say I'm talking to sales managers. Let's say I'm talking to sales managers. Here's what I would say. I, say, I would then, after telling the story, I said, now, managers, let me ask you a question. One of your biggest complaints is that your salespeople are not finding enough opportunities in the field. They're not digging or looking hard for opportunities. And then you go out there and you find them, but they can't seem to find them. And the reason is that much like the kid, they're not motivated. They're not motivated like the mother. So my question to you is, is your compensation plan for your salespeople rich enough to make them want to find that $250 contact? Because in your business, every prospect they find represents $25,000 to your bottom line. So my question to you is, have you compensated them enough for them to really want to dig, look for good prospects? See what I mean? Same thing, same thing. Are you starting to get the rhythm here? It's the same thing, right? Okay, you guys have a side conversation. But anyway, do you get the idea? So again, I made the story, dropped a point, and then I dropped the application. And I tied it back into prospecting again. What am I saying? They're not prospecting. One last story, then I'll take some questions uh, if you have any on this topic. Because I want to see how you would use it. Excuse me, like if you have a story, how do you develop it? All of us have stories. Everybody on here has a great story. You have multiple great stories. If I were to interview, I'd pull all kinds of stories out. And so what I try to do is I try to find simple stories or examples, analogies, whatever it may be. And then I said, how can I use that in a story so I can sell something? Now notice that when I'm doing this, I'm telling a story and when I drop the point, that's great. But when I show people how it applies to their thinking, it shifts their brain. They go, I never looked at it that way, Victor. I, you know, I got the story of losing the contact, but I never tied it into, am I compensating my salespeople enough for them to be motivated to dig and find quality prospects? One more example. So, story again, point, and then we'll go back to this, okay? I didn't want to forget this one. All right, now, let's say that when I was in engineering, I used to design wireless systems. I don't know if I told you that, but I started out as an engineer, right? I was designing wireless systems, right? So, uh, this is the curvature of the earth, right? Curvature of the earth. And one of the things I realized that if I put a tower here, with an antenna, right? If I put a tower there with an antenna, it's a tower with an antenna, it would shoot the signal like that. And then if I had another tower over here,
that had a receiver, so this is a, let's say this is a transmitter that's a receiver, it would actually overshoot that and it would never receive the signal. Basic engineering, we all learn about the line of sight. In other words, for an antenna to talk to another antenna, it has to have a line of sight. It has to be able to see the other one. Because they're on opposite sides of the curvature, they can't see each other. And I would actually draw something like this on stage. So what we as engineers had to do was actually put in another one, an extra tower. This required that we put in an extra tower. What did the extra tower do for us? If we put a tower here, it repeated. We were able to, this one can see this one. There was line of sight. They could see that one. And then this one can see that one, and it would just repeat the signal there because there was line of sight. Now that's just an analogy, an example, right? It's a line of sight example. What's the point here is that in order for this to reach this, you have to have what? Another antenna close enough where you have line of sight, where you have line of sight. Everything in life is about line of sight. So now my point there is that if you want somebody to start believing, now first of all, let's go back to the story. The story is, here's how line of sight works. What's my point? In order for this antenna to communicate with that antenna, it first has to be able to see an intermediate antenna and go through that one because it can see it. It has to have a line of sight. Now, here's how it applies to you. Many of your salespeople, again, assuming I'm talking to salespeople, I said many of your salespeople, when you give them a quota, a number they have to hit, in their mind, what they're often seeing is this right here. They're seeing basically, let's say, and again, I would redraw this very quickly. Let's say that this year they had to sell, last year they sold 2 million. But now you're telling them that they have to sell 20 million. I'm making these numbers up, by the way, right? That sounds unreasonable. Let's say 10 million, 10 million, right? The reason they're not motivated is that because they can't see, they have no line of sight on how they're going to actually get there. They have no line of sight. They don't see it. They can't see it and because they can't see themselves getting there. They don't believe it. So we as managers, what we have to do, notice I'm applying it to them. What you have to do is give them intermediate goals because a salesman can believe that they can probably get to 4 million. So let's get them to 4 million first. And let's say, let's focus just on getting you to 4 million. And then once you get to 4 million, you set up another intermediate goal to get them to six. And then maybe then we can get them to 10. Because from two to six, I have line of sight. And when I have line of sight, I believe that I can reach that. I can get that. But too often we give them quotas where there is no line of sight and they simply don't believe that they can actually sell that. So my question to you is, do you have intermediate goals, right? By the way, do you have intermediate goals or targets that they can hit to actually reach their number? See what I mean? Same formula all the way through. So if you look at all three stories, here's how I organize my stories and my content. So what I would do is I have an Excel spreadsheet and on my spreadsheet, it looks something like this. I'm going to show you what my spreadsheet. Under this column, I put the story. Now, the last one was more like an analogy, but you get the idea, right? What was the first story I told? The first story I told was the, I'll just call it the, uh, the broken finger one. I like the broken finger, right? The broken finger. What was the point in the broken finger? Do you remember? Uh, we think it's a lot of things when it's really just one thing, the high leverage activity, right? So here's my point, right? And the application I used it was, the application was prospecting, right? That the real problem that they have is prospecting, right? And then here I would put whatever notes. I would write notes for myself and that's how I do it. You ever see football, uh, football coaches off to the side is that they always have a play card and they're running different plays, you know, you know, they're running plays. My spreadsheets are like playbooks. So I know that I can use this broken finger story, da 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 da, if I want to talk about prospecting. The second story was we talked about the lost contacts, right? Lost contacts, right? The point here was motivation was high, right? Motivation was high, but how did it apply? 
are your salespeople compensated enough? Motivation was high. If motivation is high, people will look for it. But I asked them, what's your compensation plan look like? Are you paying your salespeople enough money? And the third story, which is really an analogy, the line of sight, the point here is they have to believe in their goals, right? And then are you setting reasonable or intermediate goals, right? And then I put notes here. Now imagine that you have, because I do, I have a bunch of these. I got, I think I have in my list, I have about maybe 80 or 90 of these, like not exaggerating, 80 or 90 of these stories in my head, right? And so when I'm looking at speaking, when I'm looking at training and sometimes I need a story, I go, yeah, I need something to tie the story together. I go to my play sheet. I go, let me, I, I really just pull it up on my computer and I see the Excel spreadsheet and I go, oh yeah, I forgot about that story. So then I'll just pick a story, I'll grab that story. And then I'll look at my content, I'll say, yeah, I can use that story as well. And so that's usually how I build my story selling when I'm selling. So if I'm selling somebody on something, I said, what stories can I use to drive home my point? Anyway. 